It's hey everyone. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Matt. Yep. Um, it is February 7th. I almost said December. It's not December. It's February already, 7th, and it's Tuesday. You're here at the Chaos Community Weekly Hangout Call. So hi to everyone. Um, looks like I have all familiar faces and names here. So um, just in case, we'll just throw out here that um, all chaos meetings, just a reminder, are under the co code of conduct for chaos. So keep that in mind. And as well, as always, you don't need to have your camera on. You can certainly keep that off and just chat with us in the chat that is next to your screen or at the bottom, there's a little chat thing. You can click on that if it's not open already. Um, and this meeting that we have right now is for um, just a weekly update of what's going on in chaos and we take this time to kind of hang out with each other and um, discuss anything we need to do about the community. So that's the purpose of this meeting here for anybody who is new, although we don't have anybody right now, we might, I guess. Uh, yeah, I'll share as always. There we go. And now I gotta redo the chat thing because you want to turn on it. captioning. Uh, it's on for me. Oh yeah, oh it's on. Is it for on me. for everybody? Yeah, I just didn't see it. Okay. Cool. And if you need the minutes, we can certainly pop those in the chat again. And if you have not answered this question and you want to, you can. I'm the only one who's done karaoke. What? Or any kind of public. Wow. Okay. Next chaos con. We're gonna we're gonna do it. I'm gonna make y'all. It's so fun. And you know what? Honestly, if you ever do any public speaking and you're terrified, like just do karaoke and then you'll no longer be terrified because that's way scarier. And it's but it's shorter. It's like, you know, three minutes. So if you can do karaoke, in my mind, you can absolutely do public speaking, I think. I'm gonna take you bungee jumping after. No, okay, no, absolutely not. <laughs> See. <laughs> That's like that, you can die. Okay, Matt, you can actually die. Your thing can snap and you can yeah. die. You're not gonna die from doing karaoke. I mean, one can die from the imposter syndrome. So yes, one can die in karaoke. I, I mean I guess, you know, and like your mind you like can't sometimes decipher a real threat from like a perceived threat. So I totally get that, but you know, I'm pretty sure physically you'll be all right if you do karaoke. So we'll, we'll talk you down. We'll talk you through it. I'll do it with you. How's that? I'll do it with you. And then it'll it'll be fine. We'll do it. Oh, see, Enoch has done it. Yes, I love it. I love it so much. Why am I not surprised? Oh, Little big what? no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I really want to know what he's going to say. Oh, I'm waiting. I'm sorry. I'm waiting with beta breath to see. Oh, he's in the choir. Yes, nice. I was in the choir in elementary school. Yes, see, yes, we'll we'll go karaoke ing together, Enoch, you and me. We got it. We'll knock their socks off. That'd be great. Uh, okay, let's jump in to the agenda. Um, first off, anybody who was at ChaosCon want to give a quick summary? I, I know several of you were. Um, we'd love to hear how it went, what the conversations were about, anything you anything you have to share would be great. Yeah, so uh, it was great. We had a great turnout. We probably had, I think, mid 40s of people in the morning. And then in the afternoon, we had probably 30 people still sticking around for half auger session and half Grimoire Lab session. Uh, we had a great morning panel with Sean, Ildico, and Don. And I did we end up not recording at all, Sean? Or did no, we I have, a, I have a, like 25 minutes of recording. And I okay. just processed it and I can pr I probably should upload it to YouTube or. Okay. Yeah, just yeah. ping Elizabeth, I think, on where to put it. Um, and so that was great. And then we did working sessions and I have to connect with Georg. Just, we were just basically kind of asking the questions, ultimately, like, what should we be working on? And there was some really great discussion um, with, with reports back. And so Georg was taking notes during that time. We, our, I think our ability to capture the notes was limited. We made Google Docs, but I don't think people, ended, we, it was hard to get people to them. You know what I mean? And so like next time we might wanna think about if we do this approach, like assigning a scribe or something in each of the, each of the groups. So I think that would be something that would be good. 
Um, but they were, they're also really quick sessions. I mean, I think they were like 16 minutes total. You know what I mean? By the time you do two minutes, two minutes, two minutes. Um, so that was great. There was a really great conversation. And um, everybody got t-shirts and everybody got stickers. <laughs> and I thought it was really nice. It's just a great group of people. In our setting, um, like kudos to to the Belmont Hotel or Bedford Hotel, wherever we were, Bel Bedford, I think. Um, it was great. So Gehrig was was really right on with kind of coordinating that. So I think we will certainly use that hotel again. Um, I don't know, Sean or Ildico, if you have comments. I thought it went really well. People were really engaged. The afternoon sessions for Augur was really well attended and had a lot of engagement from folks from the BBC and Red Hat and several other organizations. A lot of people were there. So I thought that went really well. I can second what everybody else was, was saying. Um, we had great turnout and um, the morning breakout sessions had great engagement. Um, we had uh, like we had small group discussions, like three people in each group. And I believe we got um, someone from every single group to uh, to stand up and summarize what they talked about after the two sessions were done. Um, so we got some good insights in terms of what people were talking about. Um, and um, I'm excited uh, to see if we have some notes and we'll try to dig up mine that I took on paper and add them if we We if do. We I, so Georg, Georg was in the back taking notes the mm -hmm. whole time when okay. people were talking. So hopefully, oh, good. yeah, I think he got quite a bit. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I was have... focusing on our own. Oh, Georg's here. Hi, Georg. I joined. Hey there. Sorry for being late. <laughs> Yeah, I have the notes. I just arrived home like, I don't know, 12 hours ago. So I'm still catching up on sleep. But I'll write those up. And I have not gone through my emails. I know some people have sent me their notes and typed oh, those up. So Okay, that's great I'll, too. And Georg, if you just want to send me like also the, like the raw notes, you okay. can do that too if you just want me to help kind of go through them. Yeah, I'll figure out how I'll need to collect them, put them in one place somewhere. Okay. Well, yep. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. And uh the uh I was at the uh the Grimoire Lab session in the afternoon. I think that, that went well too. We had some um uh, case studies uh presented by a few of us who are who are using the tool. Um so we had some good conversation in terms of how the tool is getting used as well as some good demonstration and opportunity for people to uh, to look into the dashboard um, in terms of how it works. So I, I really liked the event and um, thank you for everyone who was involved in organizing. Awesome. It sounds Here, like our, uh, our, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was just going to say, Georg, you weren't on, but I, I thought the hotel was perfect. Yeah, I, like, I thought it was great. And I, I think if we do ChaosCon at FOSDEM again next year, it's an absolute <laughs> no question that we, that we use the hotel. I agree. The price was good. The, the snacks that we got were really good. And I, I like that location at the top level yeah, that was a nice view the windows. up there yeah big plus one to that from me as well and the uh view or not just the fact that we had a location where the the meeting room or conference room had windows yes please Agreed. <laughs> yeah no, that's very nice those are important here's an idea should i talk to the hotel see if we can get the same room again next year I mean, why not? I I think that that um, ChaosCon with Fosdem seems like a that's kind of it's a really great one fits to connect with. For people. Yeah, it yeah. fits really well. 
So, yeah, yeah, maybe mm -hmm. don't put down the deposit just yet, but I think it's a great idea to kind of indicate that if everything goes as planned, then we would like to be there again. Yep, I'll informally let them know. And we also need confirmation from Fosdem when the next one will be. Yep. So it sounds amazing. Um, question for those who have done chaos cons in the past. I don't remember us having a format similar to this. I could be wrong. Um, was this the first time we did a format like this? Yep. Yeah. We had breakout sessions. Yes. And it was a lot more um, engaging, it seems like, than just, you know, your more standard format of here's a presentation. Are there any questions? No. Nope. Okay, let's go on. So yeah. it seemed like it worked out great. Mm -hmm. Yep, agreed. Interesting. Something we would want to do again, you think? Uh, yes. Yeah, I think okay. so. Awesome. I hope I, so. Yeah, I, I just, I really like the format of just half day engagement and then the working sessions in the afternoon. I just, it seems like this seems, this, this is like, oh, this is our best approach with kind of like the the least amount of work to to. <laughs> So yeah. it was this kind of double double thing. Now I do I do think that we had talked for, you know, we are gonna plan on doing Chaos Con with Open Source Summit North America in Vancouver. And I don't remember if we had that talk here or if it mostly just occurred at Chaos Con. But the I think the idea is mostly just invited speakers and invited like keynotes. So again, not a call for papers. Should I put that in here? Yes. Um, yeah, sure. That's, yeah. I like the concept and this also kind of gives us the flexibility to think about topics. And if we know people who would cover the, the topic well as a kind of a kickoff presentation or, or keynote and then go into breakouts and conversation after that, I think that that would be definitely great to keep experimenting with. Yep, I agree. I think didn't you you had recommended that before, Oldico, hadn't you? Kind of like yeah, some... I think I think I yeah. brought up a, a very similar idea. Yeah. Yep, I like that. I idea. just I personally always favor the sessions where I can communicate with others yep. uh, on every mm -hmm. event, and when I attend a conference where there is practically zero opportunity for that, except the hallway track. I just kind of feel like I missed an opportunity to be able to connect with people better. And I know that yeah. there are social events, but I think it's different when it's daytime and you have like a quieter setup where you can actually connect with people about topics that you want to discuss as opposed to try to yell at them in a pub. So um, I, I probably have a bias because, you know, I just really uh, try to prioritize human connections because we are at an event where we can actually see and talk to each other in person. Um, just my two cents. No, I, I agree. I think that's great. Uh, I also agree, Eldico. I also thought the breaks were not too short this time around. I think we had 20 minute long breaks. And sure. It was yep. it pretty good. Georg, oh, go ahead, Eldico. I just wanted to say one thing. If we could start a little bit later. <laughs> it's a little rough. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> we can do that. But uh, you know, it's a, it's just a net. And if <laughs> and if you will punish me and start at 7 30, <laughs> fine. I guess I deserve that. <laughs> Georg, are you gonna be in Vancouver? Possibly. I just submitted uh talk so i'll see if any of them get accepted and if they are i will probably go okay because i will not be there for sure there's a bunch of graduations in my family going on at that time and i'm just thinking about facilitation again and after you saw how those breakout sessions work i think you'd have no trouble doing those yeah i i'll practice beforehand so i have the flow down like you had <laughs> that was very good okay Any final thoughts about ChaosCon? Any questions or comments? It was great to see everybody.
All right. Let's go ahead and move on. Um, the next point on our agenda is a little update on mentorships. We've had quite a few folks asking. Uh, Google Summer of Code uh, Chaos is not going to participate this year. We are going to take a year off and possibly apply again next year. We'll have to see how things go. We are also taking a break from Outreachy. Um, we are not participating in Outreachy this year either. We are planning on participating in She Code Africa. Um, we have to still sort out what the details of that are. Um, Ruth is going to be uh, reaching out to them. And Google's season of docs is a maybe. We are still considering that. And I think we have a little bit more time for that one. I think the uh, applications are due in March sometime. So they don't, they're not even open yet. So, um, so that's where we stand. I just want to let everybody know that. And I will also um, put that in the newsletter and probably post something on Discourse as well, just so people yeah. know what the deal is. Uh, Google season of doc is open for the organization, but the, they are due in March, but uh, application is open. Oh, I see. I thought they opened on the 15th. Okay, great. Thank you, Vinod. Thank you. And from what it sounds like, season of docs right now is like a positive maybe, like kind of leaning that way. Yeah, it seems that way. It's a little bit easier to manage that process. Yep. Well, and I think in the past too, with season of docs, we've only ever had like one or two people. Yeah, it's a much smaller mm -hmm. group. And it's a lot longer, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, right. It project. seems to go into the, like the US or the like North American European fall. Yeah, it goes till, um, it ends in November. So um, it is a little bit, um, longer, but it also um, is smaller group of people. So yeah, yeah, and I like that longer because it, I, I, it seems like the folks that we've had participate in season of docs like stay with the project as a general rule longer, mm -hmm. and maybe it's that long kind of slow engagement from yeah. from March until November. You know, uh, summer of code is so fast and so intense. It is, it is. Do we have any questions or comments about that before we go on? Okay, all right, we will move on. Um, this is your reminder to sign up for Discourse, not Discord, Discourse, which is our forum that we opened last week. Uh, here it is. You can look at it. Actually, it'll probably show me logged in. Yeah. And I get some actual extra stuff. So yeah, but uh, here's what it looks like. And you can see we have quite a few conversations already going on. So um, yeah, if you have not signed up for that, please do that and join the conversations over there. And just a reminder of the kind of the difference between discourse and Slack. We are not getting rid of Slack. Slack is really great for, I think, um, uh, more synchronous conversations or like quick questions or just kind of general, um, you know, more informal conversations. And discourse, I think, is going to be really helpful for us to have more of a record of, of a conversation and like decisions that are made or things that we want to reference later. Um, it's much easier to find stuff in discourse than it is to find like a buried Slack conversation from last year that <clears throat> is in a, like a reply thread, you know what I mean? So um, that's kind of how we're envisioning it will be used. Of course, this is a grand experiment. So and communities kind of often um, adopt things the way they're going to adopt them, <laughs> regardless of what you want them to do. So um, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, but we're going to give it a shot. Um, so yeah, take a look and join. You can also, I think, read the conversations even if you don't sign up, but you will have to have an account there if you want to reply or like or engage. So we, we recommend you do it. And there, there's a start here post that will help you um, kind of figure out the landscape of how we're using categories and how to tag things and things like that. There's a, also a getting started with discourse um, link that is provided by the folks at Discourse. So it's a pretty good comprehensive guide on like what everything is and what it all means and how to use it. Any questions, comments about Discourse? Just I'm, one. Oh, go ahead, Vinod. Yeah, just one comment, uh, one more 
technology to look after like keep on watching is an addition yes and i can tell you so the the um main goal of discourse was also to re replace our mailing list which was super old and hard to navigate and hard to find things um so you can if you can use discourse as a mailing list you just need to go into your account and subscribe to the things that are interesting to you just as you would like we had separate mailing lists for like the dei working group right. and like the general so you can subscribe and just use it as email and just have it come right to your email you can reply from email you don't even okay. have, ever have to, to use the, the web interface if you don't want to so i just yeah. want to throw that out there too okay that's that's good now i don't think i need like another channel to go and look yeah, now you don't hate it so much, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Thank Sorry, you, I, thank you for sorting it out. <laughs> I know there's just so many, and and yeah, it's like one more place that people can reach out to you too. Like I think I have maybe I don't know. I counted one time, eighteen different ways people can reach me. So yeah, yeah it's one more. Whatever, that's good. <laughs> you doesn't need more ways to be reached. <laughs> right? Doesn't mean I'll answer or see yeah. it, but you know, you can try. <laughs> Any other questions, Matt? You said I think you were going to say something. Uh, so I'm I'm warming up to it. You know, I wasn't I was a little hesitant at first, sort of like what Vinod was talking about. Um, I do think we should probably, Elizabeth, maybe just like you and I, like continue to watch the the topics so that we don't get an explosion of them because just because. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I'm on there all the time. I mean, I, I can pretty much keep it open. Just like I locked and I, I locked and archived, I think, the Brussels, because I had put one on there. Sure. The Brussels, the whatever chaos count in Brussels. Mm -hmm. And I think people shouldn't be able to see that anymore if they're not admins. Okay. Um question. Would we want to keep that open for future reference? Like next year when we go to to plan FOSTEM chaos con would we want to have that open and available so we could kind of re i see it still, like, i still see, see it. it it's just it doesn't are you an admin have, now? i don't probably um i don't know that you are sean actually yeah, i see it we, we have a very limited it. number sorry so, yeah no problem i see a padlock next to it and you know it does indicate it's been archived and whatnot but um okay the posts that are there are there so i mean i think I think that's still okay because we have the reference information visible. It looks like to normal people like me, but you can't continue the discussion, which is really the biggest thing. Okay. Yeah. So it'll get buried naturally okay. as the new ones come to the top. So as long yeah. as people can't keep engaging with it, then right. it'll go to the bottom. Okay. So maybe that would be the approach then that like you and I just kind of watch things because some of these threads seem like they'll just be like a short period of time. Like some are clearly longer, like the newsletter is kind of an ongoing thread, um, but others kind of like chaos con. I'm okay with that then. That is a short term kind of thing. If it gets buried, that's fine. And we'll just lock it, but keep the archive. Yep. Okay. I want to say I'm happy that we're finally moving to discourse. <laughs> so is the mailing list completely uh, like? stopped or closed now or is it still working it's closed they are, they're closed and they're they're archived so we, okay. we did retain the archives for the mailing lists and where is that archive available is there any pointer on <laughs> anywhere that um yeah i do have them i thought i posted them somewhere i don't remember where but i can Maybe, go there. yeah in the minutes down here I, I think they might be in the minutes right here there, right there okay we we could put these somewhere. I don't know where. I, I would suggest like uh, maybe in the handbook or knowledge base or somewhere for the meeting archive for the past. Maybe is there a page in the handbook that's like communication channels or something like that? Yeah, we probably need to look at that. Um... That would be a fine place for it because then we'd say we use oh go ahead here yep yeah in the past i went to the participate page because i knew at the bottom we had the links to the archives i don't yeah, know what that would be now with the new website yeah that's a good question 
I will, I'll look into that. I don't think Ruth is on here. I don't see her. Okay. Yeah, I can look into that for sure. I'll even put any other questions, comments, discussion about discourse or the mailing list, any of that. New program. Going to move on. So this was a point that came from the DEI working group. Um, we had someone visit us in the badging uh, meeting and also uh, the DEI working group. Um, working on this public health pledge, and this is about um, public health and safety in regards to specifically open source events, I believe. Um, so this is something that we had not really thought about in the DEI working group. So it was amazing, <clears throat> really awesome feedback and um, engagement and participation. They are also doing event badging um, in a way. So I just wanted to bring this up at the community meeting to show everybody that this is something that we're working on integrating with our current DEI badging application. Um, and they're looking at, so they have three levels, um, robust, efforts made, or no policy. And there are five different um, sections. So you can kind of read about that here. Um, and what we're gonna do is not repeat what the these folks are doing we don't want to do that at all but um, what we are going to do is create a new metric around this and then on the application we're going to ask folks to let us know what their um what their grades were or maybe if they've applied like we are still kind of working out the finer details but that will be a question on our application that um we'll ask them to go look at this pledge and go through this process because I think it's super important and um, I think with regard especially to you know those of uh, those folks who have health higher health risks and like this is something that doesn't normally kind of get surfaced anywhere so um, just want to let everybody know that and there is a metric out there I don't know if Josh put anywhere yet there is a metric in the works, um, so if you are interested in working on that, if you want to come to the DEI working group, that would be great. That's where that work is happening. Hey, Sean. I just muted him. <laughs> we can hear you, Sean, in your background noise. Sorry, I muted you. I was eating some peanuts. I guess I need to mute myself before I do that. <laughs> That's great. Um, anyway, is, it, is there any questions or comments about that? Yeah, my thought, um, I don't know how it would work out, but like my first thought, because they are doing badging as well, and we are doing badging as well, like, like maybe the question is, you know, have you applied? That's the only question we ask is, have you applied for, you know, the public health pledge badge? I mean, the only problem with that is they could they could apply they being an event organizer and based on the levels they could get no effort made. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, and that and that was actually kind of what brought Josh to um, the group was that they noticed that um, there was an event and they didn't they didn't mention the event specifically, but this event got a gold badge and then had nothing about any public health and safety things, and so that was a little bit disconcerting for them because. You know, here they've gotten this gold badge. Obviously, they're just getting the badge based on what we ask them. So if we don't ask them any questions about this, it's not the event's fault. It's not our fault. Like it's just something that we hadn't asked about. So the idea was also that they would have to get some level of something, at least efforts made. Um, and then again, this is like the details we're trying to figure out. Um, and also not to put a huge burden on our reviewers too to have to like go check stuff, but. Um, like they would have to have some efforts made on these in order to get a gold badge. Like that would be actually a requirement that that the events have would to at have least to hit efforts made. Mm -hmm. So do, does this site track who receives the badge like we do? Yeah, uh, that was the intention. Um, this is super new 
okay. just launched, like literally just launched last week. So um, there have not been any events that have gone through it yet. Um, but as soon as that happens, I believe that that is the intention to, to post those publicly as we would need a way to verify yeah. also that folks are and, and ask, I would even ask the event organizer, like link to your badge or link to your where we can verify, like just so we can click on that and go look. Right. And I mean, I suppose like from our perspective, they could just say I didn't do it as an event organizer. And, they could yeah they could and then, um, we, and then we give them a badge based on because there, there are times when like we ask for family friendliness and i think some events have been like that's just not something we provide so right and and i think if, i i see your hand one sec georg um i think josh's point was to like not to you know shame any organizers or anything like that but just to have them have the information publicly available like that and that's kind of what we ask for our um, our events that apply is like we know you can't do everything like we totally get that some res some events are well resourced some are not but just letting people know so that they can make the decision about whether or not to go I think is really the key there. So like this is this is kind of what it's it's you know um, push like kind of nudging folks towards is like even if you don't want to require masks and things like that's fine just have that information publicly available on your website so that folks can can see it okay go, go ahead i have two thoughts one is this since it's a different batch from ours it's similar to what we're doing with the oss ossf the open ssf uh, best practices batch um where we just say do you have a badge or not? So like like what Matt was saying, uh, we don't replicate this. We just asked, have you applied to our shows? And then the second thought is, I see on their page that the Open Infra Summit Vancouver is an institutional signatory um, if you go to the main page. And so Ildico, I don't know if I can put you on the spot if you know something about this. I was not involved in this one. So um, not right now. But I can I can ask which which program is this? Public Health Pledge. Okay. Um, A com. <laughs> A com. <laughs> I can check who who did that from our end or how is is there any specific question um I should look into with regards to this sorry I was a little mm. distracted yeah no no worries uh my question is since open infra summit Vancouver is listed as a signatory how that engagement and if there are any experience that we can learn from as we are building it into our di badge so okay what what was the experience like going through this process and then two is also how does open infra um like show that we, we've made this pledge or is having this logo on here is is that the way it goes i, I don't know I, i'm asking Okay. Okay, I'll figure out who um, who was involved in this from from our side. Ask for some feedback and experience, and then we can take it from there. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Eldeko. And it may be that they signed the pledge, um, but have not gone through the application process. So I think those are two separate things. Like you can sign the pledge, you, anybody can sign, um, but then here's where you would go through the badge. So that maybe they haven't done the badge thing yet too. So just throwing that out there. Any other questions? Um, there's also a discourse channel on this too, or yeah, thread on this. If you want to um, chime in later, you can do that on discourse as well, or come to the DEI working group on Wednesday would be great. Any other questions, comments?
that for me. All right. So it seems like we're pretty much in support of this. Like, there's nobody that's like, no. Yeah. Okay. No, that doesn't seem like no opposition. <laughs> All right. We do have a couple minutes le left. We have a couple of things. Um, I wanted to bring this up because we've we pushed it off last week because we ran out of time. But um, I don't know. If, do we want to continue this conversation here now? Do we know what this is? Anybody? I mean, I, I, know do. What it is. <laughs> I was going to say, I can explain it if we don't, but. Um, this, this is a, a proposal to have a group focused on metrics development separate from working groups or perhaps in place of some working groups, right? Correct. Yeah, I think it's worth discussing some more. So the, I'll, I'll kind of um, give my thoughts here. So we have a new working group which is um, the OSPO working group. And a lot of the members of that OSPO working group are incredibly interested in how metrics and metrics models and software can help um, support the decision process inside of organizations. I think a lot of that discussion is about how to kind of bring existing resources together to, to, to drive those decisions, not necessarily the creation of those resources. This is a guess on my part, um, or the creation of those resources in chaos. And when we were also at um, ChaosCon, there was an OSPO++ session that happened in the right at lunch. And we talked with Claire Dillon about the possibility of creating an OSPO++, which is really university and government organizations having OSPOs kind of doing doing similar things, like what are the metrics that we can bring forward and what are the metrics models and how could we actually deploy these in practice? Um, but again, like a lot, like like the first, I think a lot of those folks that would attend like an OSPO++ working group may not really understand or care to understand the logistics of, of making the actual metrics in chaos and getting those published. I think that's kind of a, a big step. So the idea would be is that we would have obviously members like myself or you, Elizabeth, or Renat or Gay or whomever it might be that's pretty familiar with the workings of chaos, like how that gets done. And we could bring back what we're hearing from these more functional working groups as to metrics that might be missing or metrics that might be deployed. So I think if it's probably pretty easy for all of us to create a metric at this point. Like if we just sat down and did it, we could at least create a kind of a, a framework for a metric pretty fast. It may not be perfect, but we could at least get the, the narrative down as to what's in the metric pretty quickly. Um, from, from there, I think we could bring that developed metric to a working group if needed or to a, you know, say to the risk working group, if we thought it was gonna fit there or the evolution working group, if we thought it was gonna fit there and we can continue to get feedback at least in that working group. But the, the primary development really occurs within this metrics development group. We just aim to get these metrics off the ground. So that's, that's at least the thought. I will also just jump in and say, um... We we have some metrics that the metrics models working group is kind of waiting on and dependent on as well. So, um, you know, it would also kind of help support that group. And if you look at our spreadsheet, like uh, there's a ton of ideas we have that we just haven't had a chance to work on. I mean, we have so many considerings like in every group, there's a ton. You know, so like it would be great to have a a group that was focused on only that and be able to, you know, be able to actually push some of these forward and take them off our considering and actually make them a reality. But um, also, I just sorry, is Armstrong on the call? Yeah. So Armstrong and I had a quick conversation last week about um, the evolution group and other things. And we were thinking like it might be a good idea to keep some of our working groups, all, all of them, if you know, I think maybe all of them, just so we have like that pool of people with that kind of experience. Mm -hmm. 
yep. you know, that we could could refer to, or if there's a problem with one of the metrics later on that, you know, we have like that group of folks that know what they're doing, <laughs> that know what they're talking about, that we could involve. No, I, I completely agree with that. So, or say the risk working group. Mm -hmm. So if, if we were gonna develop a metric in this, this metrics working group, it'd be nice to bring it to some experts <laughs> for a little bit of feedback. I think this metrics working group is just intended to get these metrics off the ground a little faster and just yeah get some movement going mm -hmm. um but we were also thinking like maybe we could put the cadence to like to once a month because i know also we don't want to keep adding more groups and no more exactly and like and maybe that, we could so. do a lot of it async mm -hmm. but i know that we've because we've with the metrics model working group um there were metrics that needed to be developed and we have placed issues in respective working groups, like, hey, we need this metric developed. And it it doesn't really happen in a timely fashion, because I think the working group is probably working on other things or a deep in discussion about something else. So there are times where I, I think we just need metrics to be lifted kind of quickly. Mm -hmm. What do folks think about that? My thinking with the example used from risk is that I think this group could stub out what what the metric would be. And yeah, there might be some some need for expertise from the working group, but the working group doesn't need to be responsible for all of the idea generation. Yep, exactly. I think that's a well put. And, and then even subsequently on the other end, like going through the process of getting the metric published, like all all of all of the logistics involved in that, that this working group would help kind of that entire yeah. process at the beginning, I agree. The middle and the end. So uh, if I think of it in that perspective, it's that group is generating the metric and those focus groups like risk or OSPO or other are just uh, fine tuning or giving feedback as a expertise and then sending it back to that working group to yeah. They finally publish and process that. Well, we would send it back to kind of probably get final approval. And then I think the metrics working group would still be responsible for, for keeping the spreadsheet up to date, making sure that it gets published onto the website, you know, like working with Elizabeth to do that. Okay. My concern is, is that as, as we develop these these kind of functional areas, which seem to make a lot of sense, like the OSPO working group or the OSPO plus plus working group or an event organizing working group. Like they're not, my guess is they're not terribly interested in learning the processes of publishing a metric <laughs> in the chaos project. Right. You know, and so we would help in that. That's what this group would be there to help for. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, like in most of these groups, uh, these key functions are done by like few of us who has always been engaged in since very beginning and are involved in most of the working groups. Yeah. So we are out of time. Um, what do we want to do then? I mean, it sounds like I, people are in support of this idea. I don't. I didn't really hear any pushback. Um, and I don't think we had any pushback last couple of times we brought this up. Do we want to move forward with it? What do we want to do? My suggestion would be, so there is a <laughs> discourse thread right now that I had recommend or offered to kind of help start this. And Elizabeth, you had also, maybe it's something we could point to in the general channel that if folks are interested in helping, that, you know, I think it would take a little bit of time for you and me to kind of orient people on what we're talking about, um, orient people on kind of what we see as the process by which this could work. Um, so I mean, the hope would be is that we could get, you know, a half a dozen to a dozen people that would have an interest in, in kind of doing this. But, and so we might wanna to try to find who those people might be and, and plot out a course. Okay. 
I'll also add that to the newsletter as well, if that's cool. Yeah. I don't know if anybody reads those, but <laughs> we'll put it in there anyway. I don't know. <laughs> and I think in doing this, like we're still not, it wouldn't be a total commitment to do this. It would just be a way to have at least a one page document that specifies what we're talking about. Should we also start, um, I know we're like one minute past. Should we also start kind of mentioning these at the working groups as well? Yeah, I don't see any problem with that. Let's see what they think. I yep. mean, if they wanna cling to the metrics development, then they can come on over and join the- Exactly, the just send a rep, you know? That's right, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay, we will um, move this to next time. Um, there is also a, um, a discourse thread on this as well. So we can continue the conversation if you, um, want to know what this thing is about, you can pop on over there as well. So thank you everybody for showing up today. It was great to see everyone. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thanks everybody. Thanks everybody. Thank you everybody. Bye. Have a good day. Bye.